hot place, I often crave fizzy, carbonated, sugary drinks, and even sometimes ice cold beer. When we're underway on a boat, this desire only multiplies. There's something about that fizzy, sparkly, carbonated goodness that can remedy an uneasy stomach. It's thirst quenching, it's energy boosting, and of course there's just something special about alcohol. Anyways, we simply cannot meet the demand for fizzy drinks on this boat. These kinds of drinks are expensive when you're buying them daily, and they're heavy to transport by foot or on our bicycles. We hate having the piles and mountains of bottles or cans that we have to go recycle all the time, if they even are recyclable, and they are also full of processed sugars. So there's an interest that I have taken up recently that seems to tackle most of these problems, and that is brewing our own fizzy drinks on board. Kombucha is a do-it-yourself live culture that allows you to create just the right kind of yeast for brewing your very own healthy-ish carbonated beverage. Before I show you how to grow your own scoby and how to brew your own delicious very 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 slightly alcoholic elixir, I still have to finish up the galley. So here I am, stringing together a story, sewing together a plot, as well as stitching up some pockets for the galley. These placemats are made of plastic, they're lightweight, easy to clean, and they were cheap. I scrounge up a couple of finishing washers, stainless steel screws, and there you go. The galley wall becomes a storage spot for cooking utensils, small spice bottles, and anything else we don't want rolling around on the countertop while I'm making the booch. Now guess what I'm sewing up here? And extra points to those commenters who can guess what I'm blabbing on about throughout the clip. I was sewing up a Thai tea strainer. And there's my lovely little kombucha scoby in the brewing jar, some sugar and black tea, the only other ingredients required for this part of the recipe, and clean cloths and tongs to pick up the hot items I will be sterilizing. I'm going to bring some tap water to a boil, then dump in some of my other items and tools required for kombucha making. The newly sewn tea strainer, a cloth lid that will cover the fermenting tea, a tea mixing spoon, everything must go in. And now I'm going to pour some of that boiling water all over the temporary scoby vessel. Let's just pretend like I'm starting a batch just after a friend has given me a scoby floating in a bit of booch. Or we can imagine that I bought a scoby on Lime. Or even we've started a new baby one from a bottle of raw kombucha bought from the grocery store. In any case, I'm going to put the floating scoby into the waiting vessel and make sure that my main brewing container is nice and clean too. Just like all my other vessels and utensils, I'm washing with soap and water first and then sanitizing with the boiling water. I cannot overemphasize cleanliness factor here. With fermentation, I only want to feed and grow the right little critters, not the wrong kind. Now that everything is disinfected, I get my main 3 liter brewing vessel ready to receive the tea and I start brewing my black tea using potable water. I add a cup and a half of cane sugar, that's roughly half a cup for each liter of water, three teaspoons of tea, that's like a spoon of tea for every liter, and I stir until the sugar is completely dissolved. I take it off the stove top right away and pour it into the brewing vessel, which will further disinfect the whole thing. I don't have any big pots on board, so the amount of tea that I can boil in the pot is less than the 3 liter jar. No problem though, I'm going to add some cool purified water to the sugar tea concentrate to fill the jar. This will also start to cool everything down. I want my scoby back into its home and fermenting, but a temperature that is hot to the touch will certainly harm the scoby. After a couple of minutes, the tea is nice and strong so I can remove the tea bag, but it is still too hot to add the scoby. In fact, it's so warm here that it took a couple of hours for this to finally cool down. If you don't have the time to wait, you can try adding ice cubes, placing the vessel in front of a fan, or making the tea concentrate smaller to the amount of cool water. Take this chance with well-washed hands to play a bit with the extraterrestrial culture. Go ahead, play with it. Hello. I also left some room in the jar to pour in the previous kombucha that the scoby was floating in, which will help as a good brew starter. Now we're all set to ferment for six to seven days in a cool and dry cupboard on board. The kombucha will need to breathe during this part of the process, but I have the watertight lid ready just in case we encounter some bad weather or wake from passing boats. 
several days later. Over the next week or so, I'm going to begin noticing that the color is changing from a really dark brown color to kind of a lighter cidery type color. This is the SCOBY eating away at the sugar and the caffeine and the tea to create kind of a wonderfully pungent and tangy smelling uh, bacterial and yeast culture, a process which gives more and more layers onto that SCOBY. For some people, this is good just like this. You can drink the fermented tea as is, but I am not going to skip that second step. I'm going to take advantage of second fermentation. Just as brewing yeasts allow us to create alcoholic beverages such as beer, making kombucha allows us to very easily make sparkling flavored beverages on board. So after a week or so of my kombucha sitting here, I'm going to take this straw. Actually, it would be better to use a skinnier straw, but this is all I have right now. You take your straw, stick it into the kombucha and seal up the top. You're gonna have kombucha in the straw, pour it into a clean glass and give it a taste. If the brew is a little bit sweet, has that nice tangy flavor, a little bit of vinegar is okay. The longer you leave it, it will become more vinegary. At this point in the process, you are ready for your second fermentation. All you are going to need now are some tightly sealing bottles. Reusable glass pop tops are the best for carbonation in my opinion. The glass materials work well because they do not react weirdly with the acidic contents, but obviously you have to be careful with the glass if you're on a moving, rocking sailing vessel. And also you will need some fresh or frozen or dried sweet fruit of your choice. Robbie cut into some nice, fresh, sweet pineapple for an earlier batch using the spiral wedge cutting method. And then we simply used the less edible little wedges to put into the brew. That way we could also happily munch on the rest of the pineapple. But I let this particular second fermentation sit for too long. 48 hours without letting a little bit of pressure out was too much. And as you can see here, the bottle was difficult to open without spraying its contents everywhere. It was definitely well carbonated. In our warm environment, 24 to 30 hours is usually enough time to create a delicious fizzy drink. But in cooler places, the carbonation may take three or more days. Just like the first fermentation, I'm disinfecting everything for the second fermentation. My favorite flavor so far is freshly squeezed orange juice mixed with a drop of vanilla. I peeled and bottled orange slices one time, but the membrane or partition within the oranges produced a surprisingly bitter flavor. So using a tiny amount of the rind for flavoring or simply juicing them is better just for your information. the bottles, not quite all the way to the top to leave room for gas buildup, and store again in a safe spot on the boat. Preferably on their own or in a plastic bin, in the possible event that the bottles accidentally get left for too long and explode. Yes, they can explode. I can usually see the carbonation after about 24 hours, small bubbles rising up. I'll give them a burp, and if it isn't too much of a crazy party going on in there, I'll leave it for another few hours. If it's already super bubbly, I'll get it into the fridge or onto ice right away. I have kept kombucha for several days in our friend's fridge, but it never survives more than four to five days, only because we drink it all before that. The colder, the better when served. 
Cheers! All right, now time for the budget. It cost me around three to four dollars to make six bottles of kombucha, the ingredients being some sugar, a couple spoons of black tea, and whatever local and in-season fruit are around. However, the initial cost of the bottles was quite expensive for me, uh, being $13 for six bottles. So that's about $2, a little over $2 for each bottle or I could go to the grocery store, the Super Mercado, and pick up an imported beer with the right kind of pop top, and those cost about $4 each. So earlier on, Celine and I tried to grow a brand new baby SCOBY by simply going to the natural store, buying a bottle of kombucha, brewing up some tea, adding sugar, and then throwing that raw uh, bottled kombucha into our mix and it actually made a pretty good kombucha batch. However, when we tried to start a second batch after that, using the leftover uh, kombucha mix and a little bit of the slime, that little slimy semi-scoby at the bottom of our first batch uh, didn't seem strong enough to actually perpetuate itself. So we ended up getting a SCOBY from a local friend. It would have probably also been easy to find online or to find in the local marketplace someone who was willing to sell us a SCOBY. Mm -hmm.